Thank you very much, Ruth, for the introduction. I will speak about the work we did together with my colleague Bidoya and our professor Sebastian Schutz on Parareal for higher index DIEs. So many electromagnetic applications uh, lead to differential algebraic equations, such as, for example, here we see an accelerator magnet connected to a surrounding circuit or uh, for electric motors. Um, you have some non-conducting domains like air here, and they typically um, bring zero rows to the mass matrix. So you will have a DAE in that case. And you also see here, there is a, some high frequency dynamics along the time axis, uh, which has to be resolved. And uh, this often leads to a very time consuming computation, which we want to accelerate using the Pyreal method. So in my talk, um, I'll proceed as follows. First, I will talk about the theory on DIEs. Then I will introduce the Pyreal method. Uh, for higher index DIEs. We'll see how this method performs um, for two examples of index two DIEs. And uh, then I will finalize my talk with a conclusion. So probably some of you are not so familiar with uh, DIEs. So I will present some basics. So a DIE is um, called an implicit system written like this uh, in Rn, where n is greater or equal to two with a sufficiently smooth function f. And such an implicit system is a system of DIEs if the determinant of the derivative of this vector valid function with respect to the x prime is equal to zero. So if you um, just had um, some constant matrix or mass matrix multiplied here by x prime, this mass matrix uh, would have been singular. Uh, the DIEs are classified by the differentiation index M, where M is the minimal number of the analytical differentiations you have to perform um, to obtain a system of ODEs. So um, assume you have um, some equations where the derivative is not there, and you just differentiate those equations. And at some point, you might get a system of ODEs. Of course, in practice, you would not do that because differentiation is um, sensitive to high frequency perturbations, which might blow up your solution. So in practice, you would just try to solve your system with uh, some time integrators. Let us take a look at an example of DAE. So we have a variable x and y. So you see that the first equation has the derivative in x, but the second one does not have uh, the derivative in y. So then you can differentiate this uh, second equation, which is the, basically the algebraic constraint, provided uh, the g function is sufficiently smooth. And then you can say that this equation is of differentiation index one, provided uh, this derivative is invertible. Because if not, maybe you need to differentiate another time and that you will get a, a higher index. If you think about initial conditions uh, for the variable x, the initial condition can be chosen arbitrarily. But uh, for the variable y, it has to satisfy this algebraic constraint. So initial conditions uh, which satisfy um, the algebraic constraints are called consistent initial conditions. And um, also, uh, you know that for stiff ODEs, you typically use implicit time integrators. And DAEs are sometimes called infinitely stiff. So that's why for DIEs, you also use typically implicit time steppers. And for this simple index one DIE, uh, you can see that one implicit Euler step uh, applied to this DIE will give you a consistent solution after the first time step. So at, at time point T1. This is because um, you see the sec second equation 
as just the algebraic constraint uh, for the solution at T1. So if you start from an inconsistent initial condition, x0, zero, y0, zero, up to one step, you will um, get a, a consistent initial condition using the implicit Euler method. Now we have another D example. So now we have in the second equation, not only the derivative of y is absent, but also the, the variable y itself. So then differentiating this algebraic constraint, um, you obtain the so-called hidden constraint. And here you see that um, the, the y prime is still absent. The y itself will be there in f because f depends on, on y also, but the derivative is still absent. So actually you have to differentiate it again to, to get this derivative. And provided um, this function is invertible, we can say that this differential algebraic equation has differentiation index two. And in this case, you see that actually none of the variables can be chosen freely because both uh, initial condition x0 and y0 have to satisfy the algebraic constraint and the hidden constraint. So you have to be careful with the choice of initial conditions uh, for DAEs. Now, um, some more technical stuff for DAEs. Um, we consider such a system where you have this A matrix constant and uh, the B vector can be nonlinear with a node by P, the projector along the kernel of matrix A. So basically, uh, the propagator, uh, the, this projector P, it um, extracts the components which, whose derivatives are explicitly present in the equation. So if you go back to this uh, example that we have just seen, this projector P would extract. Uh, the, the variable x because we have this derivative here present. But in fact, um, although we have this derivative, the variable x is not purely differential because um, its initial condition cannot be chosen freely. So it's basically an algebraic variable. And for this, uh, there is a projector P1 along the kernel of another matrix A1 defined by this expression. And then the uh, PP1 projector, so both of those projectors applied um, to your variable, will give you the purely differential components. So in the example we have seen in the previous slide, we didn't have any purely differential component, um, but um, in general, these propagators is, um, this projector, sorry, um, get you the purely differential components or we also call them index zero. Also, DAEs are classified by tractability index, which we say for this DIE, um, it has tractability index one if the matrix A is singular, but the matrix A1 is not singular. And if both of these matrices are singular, but another matrix A2 given by this expression is non-singular, then we have index two tractable DAE. So this is a theory on some basics of DAEs and projector-based analysis um, can be performed. Let us take a look now what happens to parallel if you apply um, it to DAEs. So we consider a higher index DAE, which for us is already index two is, is high. Uh, if you take a look at the parallel update formula, which you, which you all know, um, this is basically the linear combination of the fine and the core solution. And you can imagine, even if each of these, um, of these vectors satisfy the algebraic constraint, uh, their linear combination does not necessarily have to satisfy this constraint. So you can obtain an inconsistent initial condition. Um, and this may lead to the divergence of parallel, slow convergence, or an incorrect solution. So the idea that we had 
um, is to update only the purely differential components or index zero and uh, adjust uh, the corresponding, um, the consistent, calculate the consistent initial conditions. More specifically, we define, we denote by X tilde the fine solution and X bar the coarse solution. And then the, the method that we proposed is written like this. So um, here we have the operators R and L, which stand for restriction or lifting, and lifting or um, prolongation, you can also call it. So this um, operator R, it extracts the index zero components from, from our solution. And we update uh, using the power real update formula only this index zero component. And then having uh, them in this vector x hat, we can calculate the consistent um, total vector, so the, the total variable x that we have, um, such that it's index zero components coincide with uh, the vector x hat that we calculate. So this can be done, for example, using uh, the Python code developed by the group in Berlin, which is called INIDAI. Um, you can imagine that this would um, lead to an additional computational effort, which um, you can do basically you can calculate this PP1 components or this also this projector itself analytically for some easy examples, um, but in general, you have to calculate it numerically. And um, when you can reduce this cost somehow, you should, you should do it. So you have to analyze your uh, equation first to understand if there is something better which can be done. And actually, if we have a system of DAEs of this form, so we have this constant matrix here, then this term B1 can be nonlinear. And uh, this matrix B2 is also constant. Um, this operator U, which is also the projector, which extracts uh, the index zero and index one components of X. And uh, this projector T, it extracts the index two components. And we see here that uh, the index two components are linear because we have this constant matrix P2. Um, and we also denote, introduce another operator um, projector P1 star onto the image of the projector P1. And uh, the assumption that we, that we impose is that this P1 star operator is constant. So this is just from, for the proof that we needed some technical um, assumptions. So then for this DAE system, um, we have shown that if you have an inconsistent initial condition and uh, also another consistent one for which the index zero component coincide for these both um, initial conditions, after two implicit order steps, uh, you will obtain a consistent uh, solution at the time point T2. So basically for such a problem, you, you not necessarily have to, to take care of these initial conditions because after two implicit order steps, um, you will obtain a correct solution, which would be the same as if you have started with the consistent starting point. So now um, when you want to apply real to such a system, um, you can basically apply the standard power method due to this property that implicit Euler method would give you the correct solution after two time steps. Um, so we have derived this result. If the fine propagator F uh, does at least one implicit Euler step, if you have index one DAE or two implicit Euler steps for index two, um, then you, you actually not necessarily have um, to take care of these initial conditions. So this result we obtained only for this uh, special DAE, so this structure. And here the, the important feature of this system is that we have linear index two components here, the red ones. So let us take a look 
at the examples how this method works. So we have a toy DIE of, of this form. We have three variables, x0, x1, and x2. And here in the first equation, we have a nonlinear function g given like this. And x0 is index 0 variable, and x2 is index 2. And you see that um, the x2 variable, the index 2 variable is not uh, linear because we have this nonlinear dependence. Um, so we cannot apply this nice result uh, that we obtained for um, the special uh, DAE structure. Then the setting that we use, we consider the time interval from zero to one. We use 21 windows for the power real, uh, do one core step per window and find step sizes 10 to the power minus five. And we apply the implicit Euler method. Now about these projectors, um, we can calculate them analytically. So this is the, the P projector and this is P1. And um, we have seen that in this case, two implicit Euler steps not necessarily have to give uh, a consistent solution. So we have taken um, an inconsistent initial condition, x0 superscript, and a corresponding consistent initial condition such that the index zero components for those two vectors coincide. And taking the step size h, one third, we have seen that two implicit Euler step, steps uh, do not give a consistent, uh, the same index one component, index zero component, sorry. So we have obtained after the two implicit Euler steps, um, different x zero component. And so here's the result. Um, so this, the R Euler is just the standard parallel method with implicit Euler as the time stepper. So here we don't take care of the initial conditions. And uh, you see that after the first iteration of the standard parallel, you get some, some weird uh, dynamics in the solution. So it is not able um, to capture or to obtain the solution after the first iteration, although this x0 component is just, just zero, just constant. While uh, the proposed parallel method for higher index DIEs, after the first iteration, we have obtained uh, the, the correct solution directly. And the standard parallel with implicit Euler uh, needed two iteration more, so in total three iterations to calculate the correct index zero component. And now for index two component, um, we had again, after the first iteration of the standard parallel, we have this weird jumps and um, the proposed parallel method has already obtained the correct solution after the first iteration. So now let me take a look. Here's the second example. So now we consider a circuit model by the DAE of this special structure that we have seen before. Um, the circuit has two resistant elements, um, two inductances and a current source given like this. And we have index zero variable, which is the flux along this inductance. And index two variable is the voltage across this inductance here on the top. We consider the interval from zero to 0 0.2 seconds, take 15 windows, use implicit Euler method as before. And we also um, do one core step per window and, and use the same fine step size as before. And now you see here, we again compare the standard parallel with implicit Euler method as the fine in the core solver and the proposed parallel method for DAEs. And since we have this special structure of the DIE where we had linear index two components, uh, the standard parallel method already after the first iteration, it gives us the same solution, which is the correct one as uh, the proposed parallel method for DIEs. So after the first iteration, of course, you still have these jumps, which is normal for parallel. Here we have the last 
two windows depicted. And um, both methods, uh, the standard pyreal and the new pyreal, required four iterations, so they converged um, to, the, to the final solution. And uh, the same for, so this was on the left, it was index two variable. And on the right, it is index, sorry, index zero variable. And on the right, we have index two variable. And for the index two, the standard power real still had some, some weird jumps, uh, but then it converged to the, to the correct solution. So the conclusion, so we have proposed the Pyreal method for higher index DAE system and analyzed it using the projector-based theory. And also um, for many index two DAEs, which stem, for example, from modified nodal analysis for circuits, it can be used with uh, the classical Pyreal when you apply the implicit Euler method. So in that case, you don't have to really bother calculating the consistent initial conditions, but the implicit Euler will just take care of that. And finally, I'd like to thank the help for the help, the collaborators of this work and um, acknowledge the support of the institutions which funded our work. And thank you all for your attention.